That's a buddy question. He's been in working on it. That's a buddy question. He's been involved in it. Um, but I think it's. Yeah. Good morning, good morning. Yeah, well, I think there'll be a, a few more people, or I hope there's a few more people here than last week. We had. Good morning. Thank you for those two masks. Oh, no. Hey. I know it was you. It's the state. Because you do everything. It was the state. I, uh, and I'm proud of you. I got a link saying, hey, if you want them, we got them. So That's I said, right. I'll take some. And yeah. little did I know, it was an order of 400 instead I know, of 40. You told us that last Sunday. We thought that was so good. Me and Mark are still laughing about that. Well, if, if, if you know anybody that needs them. By all means. Well, they're good. They're good. They're, they're heavy duty. Yeah. They're, yeah, they're, they're the good. good. They're the good ones. Yeah. Why well, we're looking speed? forward to it again today.
That's older than I am.
Good morning and welcome to worship here at Mount Lebanon United Methodist Church and online on our Facebook page all over the world this morning with our live stream. Uh, you, really, I only have one uh, important announcement, and that is that our year-end statistical reports have been turned in, and I have signed them, and everybody at the district is okay with me so far. <laughs> so, uh, um, so there's that. So uh, uh, that's in, that's turned in, so hopefully as long as I didn't mess anything up on them, I won't be hearing anything from the district. So um, we'll, we should be good there. Um, the only other announcement is, I ha if, as some of you have noticed, I brought some of the boxes of masks that I overordered um, <laughs> by a lot. Um, so I've got them sitting right inside the education wing door. And if you're interested in getting a full box or more, if you have other needs, uh, please let me know and I have them available. Um, so by, it, by the hundreds, actually. Um, so uh, we have those. Are there any other announcements that uh, need to be brought up this morning? All right, seeing none, let us go into a time of worship. May the peace of Christ be with you today and every day. And also with you. Join me in prayer. Lord, we come together. We come together as a family here in this community. We come together as a family of God. We come together as children of God each and every week. And each and every day we come together in spirit and in life, and in love. Guide us through this service today. May this worship be pleasing to you and to all that are present here today. May the gifts that we have given today, and the gifts that we are given each and every day, be used for your ministry in ways that maybe we never saw coming. Guide us, give us those mo no notions in each of our lives. And lead us to the love that you have called us to. In your holy and precious name, Jesus Christ, amen. Join us for our opening hymn, The Gift of Love, number 408 in your hymnal or on the screen. Please rise as you are able. You may be seated. This time I would like to open it up for prayers, praises, updates uh, for those on our prayer list and for those in our community that we have been praying for or need to be praying for this morning. Continue to pray for Sue and the entire Glenn family as uh, she uh, is going through this stage in her life, in, her, in this chapter in her life. Um, 
Are there others? Yes. Tommy and Ann McDonald. Tommy and Ann McDonald. Yes, Gail. Uh, we just heard from Jim McCarson. Uh, there's probably a little bit of surgery and the surgery was a So, continue to pray for Jim McCarson as his uh, surgery keeps getting pushed out further and further. Amen. And pray for Ronnie York for uh, as he has chosen to uh, put it in God's hands and uh, let uh, not not put himself through uh, another round of of the uh, chemo and and treatments. Are there others? Well, let us go to the Lord. Lord, we come to you each and every day. We come to you and praise you for all that you have done for us and all that you continue to do in our lives, in our communities, and in our world. Lord, we also come to you with questions. We come to you with wonder. We come to you with moments in which we don't know what to do. And we look to you, Lord, for the guidance in those times. We look to you for the ability to see and hear what we as your children are to do. Lord, your children are doing just what they are called to do. Your children are doing as they are called. We look to you now to be the healer. We look to you to be the one in our lives that empowers us to do more than we could ever do on this earth. We look to you, Lord, to be our leader, to be our guidance. We look to you and look to your Son as a showing of what the love that we are supposed to share and we are supposed to have for ourselves looks like through the life of your Son, Jesus Christ. A love that goes further than anything we could ever imagine here on this earth. A love that is more powerful than anything that we can do on this earth. A love that only you can possess, Lord. And you share that love with us each and every day, each and every moment of each and every day, as a sign of just being there for us as a sign of just being in our lives, and as a sign for us to share it with others. That love was shared so much by your Son, Jesus Christ, particularly when he taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture today comes from Paul's letter to the church of Corinth. His first letter to the church of Corinth in the 13th chapter, and it actually encompasses the entire 13th chapter. And that chapter is entitled, The Gift of Love. And it reads as follows. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but I do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, And if I have all faith 
so as to remove mountains. But I do not have love. I am nothing. If I gave, give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may, be bo that I may boast, but I do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. But as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we, only, for we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to those childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly. But then we see face to face. Now I know only in part. Then I will know fully. Even as I have been fully known. And now, faith, hope, and love abide. These three, and the greatest of these is love. The word of God for us, the people of God. Lord, guide me through this message, and may it be pleasing to you and to all that hear it each and every day. For you are my rock and my redeemer. Amen. As I began to work through this scripture... I began to think about all the moments in my life in which I've heard it. And I'm sure as we were reading it today, some of those moments came to your minds. First thing that came to my mind was all of the weddings that I've been to, including my own, where the scripture was presented in some way, shape, or form. Then, because of the way my mind works, I couldn't help but think of all the times I've walked through Hobby Lobby and seen this scripture in some way, shape, or form on different signs or different methods of showing it, much like the image that is on our screen today, or all the inspirational signs and thinking that we see on social media or used to see on posters hanging in wall, on walls in offices. The greatest of these is love. The greatest of these is love. Now when we think about this scripture, at least for myself, I always think about the th thought that this is love for others. That agape love that we have. That unconditional love that we have for others. An unconditional love like Christ has for us. An unconditional love like a parent may have for their child. No matter what happens in their life, no matter what goes wrong, what they do wrong, what they are seen to do wrong, there's always still a love for them. And that love may be even for a brother, a sister, a cousin, other family members. No matter what wrong that we perceive they are doing, there is still a love there. That's the love that I first think about when I hear this message, hear this scripture. But what if we instead looked at the mirror? What if we loved like we love others ourselves? What if we showed that love that we have for others for other family, for other friends, to ourselves. What would that look like in our lives? 
we were patient with ourselves, if we were kind to ourselves, if we endured ourselves, if the love that we had for ourselves was never ending like the love that we have for others is never ending. I wonder what that would look like. And for me personally, I can't say what that would look like. Because I've never really felt that continuous love for myself. Something that I've worked on my entire life and continue to work on each and every day. But what does that look like in our lives? The never-ending, unconditional love. Would things be different for each and every one of us if we looked internally more than we looked externally? We thought more about ourselves than we thought about what others thought of ourselves. If we quit making the cymbal noises and the gong noises in order to believe that we are loved, when in actuality we are hurting inside. I'm not sure about you, but This has been the hardest thing for me growing up. Doubting every moment, every move, every motion I make. Did I do it right? Was it good enough? Is it good enough? And it doesn't matter what it is or how it is. It can be as simple as, did I make dinner good enough tonight? When in actuality, I'm feeding those that need to be fed. Was the service good enough? Did it reach the right people? Was everything just perfect? Well, no. Nothing is going to be always just perfect. At least not in my eyes. Because we as human beings have been taught that we are to doubt ourselves. Society has taught us that we are never good enough. At least it's taught me that. But instead, if we live into the life that the love that we have and the love that Christ has for us is good enough, and we take and look into that mirror and see ourselves as good enough, as being enough, as being strong enough, being whatever it is, then what does that mean in our own personal life, our own journey with Christ. When we look into ourselves, we find what Christ is searching for. When we look into ourselves, we find what Christ is pointing us towards. When we look into ourselves and not always look at what the world is saying, It's amazing how the message can change. We are only one person, individually, on this earth. We are only one being. But we, as one being, can do so much when we have the Lord with us. Each of us is in a place in our own individual life in which something, someone, some moment in time has disappointed us. I wonder how if we were to look into ourselves and see, was that the other person or was that ourselves making that assumption? how we would change our lives. When we see ourselves through the lens that the world sees us versus seeing ourselves through the lens that the Lord sees us, those are two very, very different lenses. We try to hide behind the smile that the world tells us we have to put on. 
We hide behind all of the symbols clanging and the gongs ringing that the world tells us that we are to put on. Now, there are moments in our lives in which we have to put that smile on. We can't actually be the person and have the emotions that we want to have, that we feel in our hearts, our minds, and our souls. I'm reminded of all the time that I worked customer service where I had to put that smile on, even though I didn't want to. Reminded of those times where I know my teachers were putting that smile on even though they didn't want to put that smile on. They, they had other words that they wanted to tell me, but they knew they had to keep, keep that front going. But what if that front wasn't the only thing that people saw? Because friends... I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but people can see right through that. People can move past that. And the Lord sees right past it every single time you do it. So why do we, as human beings, continue to put that front on? To continue to not love ourselves only Make it appear that we love ourselves. I would say it's the world. It's society. That's the easy right way out. But we've been taught this our entire life. We've been taught to not be kind to ourselves. We've been taught to not love ourselves, but we need to be the loving, caring people for others. But when we forget about ourselves, we forget to do what we are called to do, not only for others, but for ourselves, it is then when we are failing. We are not living into the message that Paul is giving us here. Because if this love doesn't exist in our own bodies, in our own presence, in our own souls... How can this love be shared with others? Is it not just a farce if we're sharing this love with others but don't love ourselves? Are we not just clanging those symbols? I don't know about you, but it's hard to not just clang the symbols an awful lot of the time. Make it appear that we're all doing all right. We're all doing okay. Life is going on. But because that love never ends from Christ, that's what's carrying us. Like our scripture said, prophecies will come to an end, will come to fruition. Knowledge will come to an end. But love never ends. Love never is completed. And that's that agape love that I spoke out about earlier. It's that unconditional love. That love that doesn't have any strings attached. A love that is not the same as the affectionate love that the world seems to think that we all need all of the time. If we could separate ourselves from the affectionate love and live into the love of God, then that affectionate love would carry on without any issue. We as individuals, we as society, we as the world have put that affectionate love up here above the love that God has for us. And that, I think, can sometimes hurt us because we forget what love really is we forget what this love really is this love is being patient and being kind not boasting about our 
practices or not boasting about what we've accomplished. This love is not envious. It's not arrogant. It doesn't say, I love more than anybody else. I'm a better Christian than anybody else. Instead, this love exists. This love exists for us as Christians, for us as human beings, to share what Christ did for us. This love exists so we can model the life of Christ because Christ showed us what the love looked like in human form. Christ showed us how we were to be in human form. Christ even modeled for us what it was like to give ourselves for Christ. Give ourselves for the Lord. But if we don't live into that love each and every day in our own selves, how is it that we can profess to others to love? We can't. Until we have really come to grips with what it is to love in ourselves. We can't love others. Now it's a constant work. And as we work on ourselves, we can work and help others. And as we work through the situations in our own lives, we can help others work through situations in theirs. But the more love that we have, the more power God gives us. The more power God gives us to make change in our lives and in the lives of others. And if we're able to see that unconditional love, if we're able to see that unconditional love when we look in the mirror each and every day, then we can share that unconditional love with those around us in our communities, in our families. What in our lives needs to be adjusted to fill and feel that love in our lives? What in our lives might need to change just slightly so that we may live into the love that we are given? What in our lives might need to be adjusted so we can fulfill the love that God has given us in this moment. Maybe it's for others. Maybe it's for ourselves. Maybe it's for both. What can we do? Love never ends. Love never takes a break. Love never ceases. However you want to say it, however it's translated in your scripture, however you read it, no matter what, the love of Christ is there with you each and every step and each and every breath that you take on this God's earth. And because of this, and because we are heirs to Christ, we are the children of God, We live into that love each and every day. Because that love that Jesus had, that the Lord shared with Jesus, is also shared with us each and every day. So share that love in this world. Not only in actions to others, but in actions and emotions to ourselves. For if we do not have love, no matter how much faith, no matter how much hope, how much ambition, how much knowledge, what possessions we give up or give. But we don't have the love that Jesus Christ shared and modeled for us in our lives each and every day. Then what do we have? We have nothing. Amen?
Please rise. So we go out into this world, this crazy, mixed up world that we live in, this world that was not designed by God. It was given by God, but us as human beings have made it such a crazy and mixed up world. Show the love that you have for yourself each and every day. And you can do that by showing the love of God each and every day. So go forth. Show love. Be love. And demonstrate love each and every moment of each and every day. For that is what we are called to do as Christians. And that is what we are called to do in this crazy, mixed up world. To let everybody know that they are loved. Amen.